All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the battery on this 13 inch MacBook Pro model A1708. This is a mid 2017 model. Okay, so this process, I'm gonna show actually how to remove it um, more completely. I had another one where I didn't take out the trackpad and then it, sometimes people were messing it up. But anyways, you wanna remove all the screws from the bottom. These are Pentalobe uh, 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. Okay, so the back two towards the corners are longer, though it's always a good idea to put the screws in the pattern you had them, just lay them out on your desk. So if it's like that, put the two at the top and then four at the bottom. Um, and that's because sometimes the screws will look the same, but then they're actually different. So it's always a good idea to actually keep them all in order. And actually the bottom two corners here are also kind of long, but a little bit shorter. And then the ones towards the center are the shortest. Okay, so again, you want to try and keep the screws in order. Make sure you put back the same screws where you got them. All right. Okay, so we're moving all the screws. Okay, so there's only those six screws on the bottom. After you do that, you can use a suction cup or a piece of tape, whatever you want, um, as long as you can pull up this layer. So you want to start here towards the bottom where there's the four screws. Pull that up, you'll get a slight gap here. And using that gap, let me turn this around. <clears throat> You can get your pry tool or fingernail or whatever in between that gap, okay? Just like that. That's the only time you need the suction cup or the tape. And then what I do is I slide my tool or fingernails all the way down closer to the center of the MacBook. And then I'll use my thumb on the bottom layer, which is the trackpad or the um, palm rest, okay? And my nails right now are a little bit too short. I cut them halfway. But anyways, what you do is you pull up with your fingernails and then your thumb, you push it down. So just like this, and then you can use your other hand to help pull, and you'll pop up that clip, okay? After you do that, you'll go around the center, go back to the other side, and repeat on this side. Same thing, there you go, pop that clip. Okay, after that, I like to put the computer up like this, all right? Um, one thing if you haven't done is make sure that your MacBook is turned off. Um, Oh, this, it actually turned itself on when I started clicking the trackpad. So I'm going to have to, oh, they left it on. Okay, I'm just going to shut it off all the way. Okay. All right, so press and hold the power button. Usually you'll want to enter the password and then shut it down properly. But um, the customer, I'll, I'd have to ask them for it. So I'm just going to do that. And usually it's okay. Macs are pretty good at um, not having issues if you shut them down like that but it's always a good idea to shut it down properly. Anyways, um, stick your fingers underneath the panel like this and then grab it with your palm. And then here you wanna also push while you pull down with this hand. So what I like to do is kind of use some of my fingers to push down and then other fingers to kind of wrap over so the MacBook doesn't fall down. And you just push and pull it down as hard as you can. Be careful, um, if you want, you can put something to pad your fingers because the backs of your fingers will scrape on this if you're not careful. So you kind of want to pull this forward and then pull it down just like this. <sighs> okay. It's really tough to pull it down on some models. So if you can't get it to come down, just know you have to pull really hard. Okay. A lot of times this side will come out as well, but if it doesn't, then you can just repeat the same thing on this side, lift it under and then pull that down. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So there we go. We got the bottom cover off. I'm just going to clean the dust out of this. All right, I will have to use my air blower because it looks really dusty. Um, but yeah, usually what I do is I'll take like a toothbrush and then I'll scrub the dust off um, just to loosen it up. And then I'll use an air blower to get the loose dust off of it. But um, actually I should do that now. So I'm gonna go clean the dust off and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm back, cleaned out the dust, all right. Just used a toothbrush, scrubbed out the loose dust, and then, or loosened up the dust, and then used an air blower to blow it out, okay? You can use like a hand blower like this, uh, but I have an electric one that I use. Okay, all right, so we've got the dust out. Let's see here, my tool kit's in the way, let me move that over. All right, so to remove the battery, first thing you wanna do is pull up this plastic cover, okay? All right, just like this, just get underneath and slowly peel it up. All right, there's a adhesive foam underneath. Um, if you're not careful, it'll tear, but it's not really too big of a deal as long as you can get it to stick down a little bit, All right? But just slowly peel it up. Okay. 
the side is like really stuck. Alright, I'm just gonna peel up this. There we go. Alright, so there you go. This piece comes out. You can see where the adhesive is. Okay, after you do that, what you want to do is peel back this little black thing. Don't peel it off. And then underneath, let me see if I can zoom in so you can see. Okay. So underneath, there's this little thing here. You want to flip that little clip up. It's a little latch. And that just holds the cable down in place and connects it to the board. Make sure you're very gentle with that. I've heard a lot of people break those off. So you want to be careful. I haven't had that issue. But anyways, after you flip that latch up, grab the cable and then just pull it straight back. If it doesn't come out easily, you might have to wiggle it a tiny bit. Um, otherwise, make sure that that latch is flipped up. Okay. After that, you'll want to switch to a T5 or a Torx 5 um, screwdriver. And then we'll take out this one big screw here. Okay. This screw uh, connects the battery to the main board, so you have to make sure that you take that out. And also this um, cable connects to the battery as well, so if any of these, if this cable or this isn't connected properly, the battery's not going to work. Anyways, once you do that, you'll see this, this is actually a little metal plate that goes to the motherboard. You want to gently lift this up, okay, just, I just get my fingernail underneath, but you just pry it up lightly, okay. So just like this, and what you'll see is as you, if you pry this up slightly like this, it will stay disconnected from the battery, and that's what you want to do, okay? Make sure that this stays disconnected to, from the battery. You don't want to pry it up too far, or you can actually break this piece here. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, disconnect the trackpad cable here so that there's Actually, we'll take the whole trackpad out just so there's less risk of damaging it because I've had some people that they end up damaging that cable. So just to make it a uh, less um, chance of damaging your computer, I'm going to show how to do that. So I think we have to use a T3 and possibly the T5 as well. Let me double check if the T5, okay, the T5 fits there and, oh, actually just T5. Okay, so we don't need the T3 screwdriver, we just need the T5. So first what you wanna do is remove the two screws holding this little metal cover, shield cover here. That cover is there to hold the trackpad cable in place. All right, so remove those two screws. After you do that, take the metal plate off, okay, just like this. And then get underneath this cable. I just use my fingernail. It's the very top of this cable. You don't want to try and pry further down. You just pry the very top part of it and you just pull it up just like that, okay? And that's how you remove the trackpad cable. Then you're gonna to want to peel this cable, but you want to be very careful. I try and keep it as flat as possible. So I kind of grab as close as I can to it and then just pull that way at the same time as I kind of pull up and you can go kind of slow. All right, just do this. And then what you want to do is kind of hold here so you don't accidentally like rip it out too fast, but just like this. Okay, and there we go. All right, so now we got the trackpad ribbon cable up. We're gonna have to remove the trackpad. This one you want to be careful not to flip the trackpad over when you do this, so I'll show you. But there's four screws here, four screws here, and then two screws towards the bottom here that we need to remove. Make sure that you remove the same screws I remove. You don't need to remove the other screws that are in there, okay? So remove these two. Okay. And then remove these two. Okay, this just makes the process a little bit safer. You don't technically have to remove the trackpad but it does make it um, a little bit easier to work on, okay? And if you do happen to mess up the trackpad cable, it's easy to replace. Um, you can also just try pulling the cable out and reconnecting it. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a bit. Okay, now we got all four on that side, so now we're gonna remove the two down here, okay? Let's remove those two screws as well, all right? So now that we got those all the screws out, you wanna lift, make sure the trackpad cable is up and then just open up the MacBook, okay? Do this slowly, okay? And then just slowly open the MacBook. The trackpad will just be sitting on the bottom, okay? And then you wanna gently lift the trackpad out. You don't wanna flip the trackpad over because if you flip it over, there's these little metal things that can come off and they fall off really easily. Even just blowing on it, I'm kind of 
have to be careful because if you blow on it, they're very light and then the air can get underneath and these little things will come out. So I don't know if I can lift one out to show you without flipping the whole thing over, but let me see here. It's, it's hard to like pull them up because they're so thin, but, um, oh, there we go. So here you can see there's like this rectangle one. Okay. So you want to be very careful because those will fall out and then you'll lose them. I don't know if they do anything. Maybe they help with the vibration. And then there's two little circle washers on these. Okay. But anyways, we're going to just set the trackpad aside. Okay. So now we're going to pry out the battery. We do have to remove two other screws here, actually. Um, so these are, I think, T5 as well. So there's these two little screws. There's one on this corner holding down the battery board. Okay. So remove that. And then there's one underneath this little white sticker. That white sticker is a liquid detection sticker. So if it gets wet, it will turn pink. I'm going to try and salvage that sticker by using a needle. So what I usually will do is try and get underneath that sticker and lift it up. A lot of times it just gets d destroyed, but I'm going to try and lift it up with a needle. Okay. Just like this. All right. And see if I can pull that sticker out. There we go. So we got the little white sticker out. As you can see on the other side, it's actually red or pink. Okay, so we're going to set that sticker aside. And that basically, when it gets wet, the ink just bleeds through. And that's how they know that liquid got into your MacBook. Okay. All right, so once we got that piece of tape, we're going to remove the other screw that was under it. Okay, so here you can see that the battery board is actually loose and wiggling around now. So we will have to transfer this cable over to the new one. So to transfer that, there's a little latch on this as well, just like the other one. Flip that latch up, okay, and then pull that cable out. So we are going to have to put this new, uh, this old cable onto the new battery. Um, if your cable is broken, then you'll have to see about getting a replacement. I don't know what the part number or anything is on it. There's no part number. So you can probably search for like the MacBook A1708 or whatever um, battery cable. Okay, and see if you can find one that looks like that. All right, so now that we got all of that out, let's zoom back out. Now we begin the kind of difficult part, which you have to pry this battery out. Some people will use like rubbing alcohol or something, which it might be okay on this model because there's like a raised gap um, or raised area for both of these sides and then this side. Um, it kind of will just leak into the screen. I don't like doing that though because then liquid can kind of drip into here and then go in into the screen and then you have to make sure to dry it out. I'm going to clean this. It's very dusty so I'll be back. But anyways, yeah, I don't like using rubbing alcohol usually to flood this to pull it out though it could work. All right, so I'll be back. I'm going to clean out the dust. All right, I'm back. So I cleaned out the dust from the trackpad. Okay, so... Now what we're going to do is pry up the battery pack, all right? I probably, I think I forgot to mention, but usually after you disconnect this and that cable, you want to press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds to drain any power. Um, this will prevent any damage if you do something wrong with anything over here, okay? So yeah, after you disconnect the battery, press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds, all right? I should have mentioned that earlier. But um, anyways, yeah, now what you do is you get a thin pry tool like this. If it has like a little, this one that I have, I bent it and it has like a little curve to it. So half of it's pointing up and then you can like flip it over so it points down. You want the sharp, um, the, the tip of it to point downwards. So that way when you pry underneath, it's not going to uh, actually puncture into the battery. Okay, so... This is a little bit tricky because there's so little gap here, but let's see if I can do it. I forgot. Oh, I'm going to start from this side, actually, the bottom, and then we're going to pry underneath here. Okay, so there's all adhesive. You want to try and make sure to keep the tool facing, pointing down into the metal. Don't let it go up into the battery. Okay, and then you just pry this out. Okay, let's see here. Need to find the starting point. There we go. And then we just go along okay just like this and then if you want you can kind of slide the tool sideways as you do this okay so it's kind of like I'm cutting into it if you're looking for this kind of tool this is actually um, 
pharmacy tool or something to pick up pills. Though they do sell like little frosting spatulas like this as well, but they are slightly thicker. So I didn't know where to find this exact one. Um, and then, yeah, so it's kind of tough to kind of say where you can get this. Um, but the little frosting one will work just as well. So there we go. So once you do that, you can see the battery pack comes up and you can see the three adhesive strips running across. Okay, so we're going to do this on the other side. Same thing, stick the tool in, make sure that the, oops, sorry, make sure that the tip is, let me zoom out so you can see better. All right, make sure that the tool is pointing downwards and then just try and slide it through. You do have to try and find where you can slide it in. So if you look here, there's actually a raised bump here, so you can't go under there. So it's good to start from this. Here you can see it's raised up and then you, so you start with the tool raised up, not in this little dip, okay? Or you can, oh yeah, this is probably the best. So you start here and then you just slide it across if you can, all right? Same thing with this side, start over there in the center because that's where it's already raised. Slide the tool under and then work your way down, okay? Let's see, this is kind of tough going from this angle, but let's see here, just like that. All right, here you can see the tool is actually all the way through to the other side and you just gotta work your way to the other. Um, you can pull the tool out and then push it back slightly and that helps get it underneath the adhesive, kind of like a knife, though this isn't sharp like a knife. So yeah, it's not really cutting anything. As long as it's all underneath the battery, it's not actually cutting so um, the, into the battery, okay? So it should just slide into that adhesive. All right, and the last bit, just like that. Oh, I actually can smell the thing tore, I think. But there we go. Hopefully this battery won't explode. Okay, just like that. Here we go. So here you can see, actually, the foil did rip off. So when that happens, you can actually, it has a smell, so you can actually smell it. So be very careful, because if you do this, it can catch on fire or um, explode. So you want to be careful. All right, so let's see here. Um, the other thing is if you want, um, you can drain the battery completely and that will help so that way there's no power stored in it so it won't catch fire. Okay, so now we're going to lift up. You can actually see under here where you're going to be prying. So that helps. Um, and then you want to be careful with this. Okay, so what you want to do, again, get the tool. Here you can kind of see what you're doing. It helps a little bit. Um, and then you gotta get between the battery and the metal piece, okay? So normally I would pry from the side or the top here, okay? So this one you can actually pry from this because there's a bigger gap. And then you can go this way, okay? Just like this. All right. Just cut through the adhesive like that. Okay. Just like that. And you can pry through the adhesive. Once you get it through here, if you want, you can go from the other side. Okay. Because then you can actually see through the gap of where the trackpad is. Let's see here. All right. So I don't know if you can see, but then through here, you can actually see that you're prying underneath the metal pieces. Okay. I don't want to flip it over because then um, these battery packs will fall over. So I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. But you want to monitor. You, oh, I guess I can do it like this. Let's see. So you go like this and then you slide it over. You can see that you're going over slightly and then just slide the tool in. Okay. Just like that. Pull it back slide it over and then put it back and just keep doing that all right oh i accidentally popped it out there we go and just do that all the way across and then the battery will be able to fall out okay but again you don't want to do it like this because then the battery will just fall out so it's good to do it this way and then you can just look from the bottom um, okay as you do this Alright, this is the easiest way to do it. 
that I know. I don't know, some, some people have easy other ways or something. They say to use like gentle floss, um, which I guess if you can thread it around will work. But um, here you go. So once you get that out, you want to be careful. You don't want to touch the battery on this piece since it's um, disconnected. So slide this out just like this. Okay. And here we go. So here you can see I accidentally tore this piece. So you want to be careful with that because now that means the battery is exposed and it's possible it can go on fire. But um, yeah. So hopefully I didn't get anyone to light their house on fire. But uh, make sure, it, hopefully if you watch this whole video, you'll know what how to do it and avoid that, but um, I was kind of working too fast. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna cover this with uh, the battery with some electrical tape just so it doesn't have any problems. And then I'll probably throw that outside somewhere where it won't be able to catch anything on fire. Okay. All right, so let's get this out. Okay. I'm gonna just wrap the battery so that it won't have any problems. Again, once you take out the battery, um, these do have to go, or you should send them into e-waste. I think some people just throw it in the garbage, but uh, be careful because yeah, you don't want that to catch your garbage cans on fire. Okay. So I just wrapped this battery up like that. I'm going to set it aside somewhere where it can't catch things on fire. Okay, my floor is like a solid cement, so it should be fine right there. All right, so now we're going to just peel off this old adhesive. So you can use any scraping tool. I just use my fingernails. Okay, I'm just trying to scrape this up. This adhesive, I think Apple used a more brittle adhesive. Um, on some of them you can peel it and then you can grab the edge. Let's see if we can do it on this. Oh, yeah, okay So once you grab the edge you can actually peel the whole adhesive up Okay, just like this and just do that with all of them All right again, you can use your little pry tool scrapey tool to kind of Start the peeling process and then once you do that you can if you don't have fingernails or you can't grab it You can use tweezers as well, and then you just peel this up all right, just like that. And we're gonna do that with all nine strips, three on, under each piece. Okay. Just like that. Okay. All right, so this one's not too bad. Just gotta get all of these out. Alright, there we go. And you wanna peel these slowly. If you peel it too quick, then it'll just tear and it'll make your job harder. Okay? So you do want to just go slowly. Okay, peel this one up as well. Alright, now the last three. And usually after um, putting the battery back and everything, you will have to plug it back in. So if your charger's broken or your charge port's broken, usually replacing this isn't going to let you turn your MacBook on. I don't know why, but Apple likes to make all the parts dependent on each other. So if any part is not working properly, then the whole thing doesn't work. I don't know. Apple likes to make it so that you have to bring it to them or buy a new one, I guess. Okay, this one, these middle ones seem to be more of a pain to remove. They are just crumbling. So I'm going to use this tool and just scrape it up. Okay, let's see if I can peel it off. I doubt it, but let's see. Hmm. Yeah, see this one, it kind of like 
the adhesive just stretches and then it just tears up. So I don't know why Apple did that with the center pack, just to make it more difficult or something. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna scrape this all up and get all this adhesive off. Okay. Can also do this with a razor blade, but a razor blade is brittle, so you want to be careful. Don't try and pry stuff up with the razor blade, because the razor blade will actually just snap, and that can be very dangerous. Okay, just in case you guys were wondering and thinking you could use a razor blade to try and pry this stuff up. Okay. So this part, if you want, you can probably try using some rubbing alcohol and see if you can peel this off or wipe it off. But if it gets under here, it can get in the keyboard. And rubbing alcohol by itself isn't a problem, but it will bring the impurities from the adhesive and whatever else is in your laptop. And that could short out and damage your, your laptop. So that's why I don't like using um, rubbing alcohol to remove component and remove the batteries okay all right so hopefully you can see what i'm doing i'm just scraping all this adhesive out again if you want you can fast forward though i usually do talk about random stuff computer related repair related that might be useful so i don't know you could it's probably better if you watch through just in case all right go Got most of that off um, and actually you can leave this stuff on here it's just that the battery pack will start wobbling around so um, if you do that you might want to put some padding or something in between to keep the battery from moving around too much uh, yeah but I like to kind of stick it back down the way it was so I always try and remove the adhesive so even though it is a pain. Let me see if I can just cut through real quick here. Yeah, nope. Yes and no, it's kind of working. Okay. But yeah, for this part, you can use a razor blade or something. Okay. And then if you want, if the residue annoys you, though the battery will stick to it, the new battery, um, you can clean that off with some rubbing alcohol and a piece of paper. I'll actually show that on video, I think, at least a little bit of it. I don't know if I'll do the whole part. Just got all of it out. All right. Okay, so we got all of that. Now what I'm going to do is Try and clean off some of the residue with rubbing alcohol, as I mentioned earlier. So I just got a paper towel or a piece of napkin. 
All right, rubbing alcohol, this is 91%. Usually the higher percentages are better, but it does need not to be, it shouldn't be completely pure because the completely pure one, it doesn't have any water and water helps remove some of the debris as well. So you kind of do want a little bit of water in there. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna clean some of it off. Usually it's very difficult to get all of it off. So it's usually, and it doesn't matter because the battery sticks pretty well even without completely cleaning it. So I'm just gonna clean it just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over now because that has all the sticky residue in it. And wipe it again. You can see most of it is coming out. Okay. go clean it up quite a bit okay there we go so clean out that okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the replacement battery and we're gonna put that in place all right Grab the replacement battery. Okay, so usually the replacement battery, let me see if I can show this. Oops, okay, so usually the replacement battery will come like this. There's this for the adhesive strips, and then the top one is just to keep the batteries aligned, and that way when you drop it in, it's not going to move around, okay? So the one important thing is you want to make sure these two little contact points line up properly there. And usually you can do that just by lining up these two screws. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel off this um, the adhesive protector layer. Okay. Just like this. Okay. Then you can toss that or save it or whatever. Okay. And then what we're going to do is slide that um, this board underneath. Okay. Just like this. All right. Make sure that the screw holes line up and then we'll slowly drop the battery in place. Okay. The middle one's kind of already sticking, but um, there we go. Okay. And then make sure that the tops are uh, flush with this piece because you do want that bottom gap like before. Okay. There we go. Then you can push the battery down. All right. The first thing you want to do is put back the two little screws there just to make sure everything stays lined up. Okay, so if my head gets in the way, I'm sorry, but I'll put that one screw in loosely. Okay, and then I'll get the other screw, put that in loosely as well. All right, then once you get those, you can kind of move this little board around slightly. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. And that way you can get it all lined up. So I like to get it centered into those golden parts if I can. Okay. And then just tighten it down. Okay. Just like that. All right. So now that we got that in, we're not going to push down this piece yet because that piece, it turn it powers up the MacBook. So we're going to leave that out. We're going to peel these. Oops. Let me zoom back out. We're going to peel this off, basically the alignment strips. Okay. Technically you can just leave that on, but I like to take it off because it does help hold in a, a tiny bit of heat. Shouldn't be a problem, but I just take it off anyways. Okay. So next we're going to put back the trackpad. Okay. Again, hopefully you didn't flip it over. Okay. So to put this back, you just open up the screen slightly again, and then lay the trackpad in there, lift up the trackpad cable and guide it through the hole. Okay, slowly lower this back down. Um, actually, you can do it while it's still open if you hold the trackpad up in place. Um, okay, let's see, I might have to do it that way so I don't have to hold this. Okay, so let's lift the trackpad up. Guide the wire through, okay. So it kind of helps to guide it through and then hold the trackpad in place first. And then you can put like the screws in loosely a little bit, just so it stays there, okay. 
and then do that. All right, put one track pad screw there, and I'm only putting it in loosely just to get it to stay in place while I close the screen. Okay, and then I'll put the one in the corner up there. All right, then you can let the screen drop back down. And then I like to put all the screws in loosely. And then after we do that, I flip the, uh, or I open it up so I can make sure that the trek pad is centered and then tighten all the screws down. Okay, so right now I'm just putting them loosely to hold the little washers in place and hold the trek pad, keep the trek pad aligned. Okay, just like this. All right, we're almost there. So got all of that in. You'll want to reconnect the trackpad cable. Make sure it's lined up before you push it down. So just take a look at this and then make sure it's lined up. And then you just push it down. There we go. Just like that. We're gonna put the little trackpad cover back on, just like this. Depending which model you have, if you have the same one, it should be all T5 screws. Um, but some of the other models, they use T3 screws. So keep that in mind. If for some reason you can't um, get your screwdriver to unscrew these, you want to use a T3 screwdriver bit. Okay. All right. So put that screw in. Again, I like to put them in loosely first, and then I can adjust it and align it, and then tighten it down all the way. Okay. There we go. So you can put stick this cable back down. I start from up here so it's flush and then work my way down. All right, so now, like I was saying, I like to flip this over and then check because see the trackpad can kind of move around. I don't know if you can see the gap. So what you wanna do is make sure it's lined up kind of as centered as possible. It's kind of sometimes very difficult to do this. What you can do is you can take a piece of tape and then I like to fold a little bit of the tape over so I can use this as a pull tab so it doesn't stick all the way down. And then just line it up. Sorry if my head gets in the way. But just line this up to where you like it, where it looks like it's lined up. And then you can stick the tape down and that should hopefully hold it in place so it doesn't move around. And then you can flip it over. Okay, and then we'll just tighten the screws down. All right, just like that. So this is a new method that I kind of figured would work. I just use whatever I have lying around. And yeah, before I had to like keep manually adjusting it until I tightened it right. So hopefully this tape method works a lot better. Okay. All right, so now we got all the trackpad screws in. Let's flip this back over, make sure it looks aligned and it looks good to me. So now we're just going to use that tab we created and peel that back up. All right. There you go. All right. So now what we're going to do, we got all these screws in. We do need to put this little trackpad cable, ribbon cable back in. So what I do is I kind of like open it up slightly, the curved part, and then I hold it like this. Um, you can do it however works for you. Make sure that little tab is flipped up. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see better. Okay, and then we got to push this cable in. So it's hard to do this in camera, but let's see. Come on. So this part is a little tricky. I don't know if I'll be able to show it on camera because I have to like tilt it over. It's kind of awkward doing it in this way that I'm trying to film. Okay, there we go. So it went in. As you can see, the wings aren't exposed, but you can see a little bit of the gold piece. So that's normal. Then you want to slide your finger over that little latch to push it back down. Okay? You don't want to like use a tool or something. You just want to slide your finger over the top. All right, so now that we got that, we're going to put back the screw here. This is the T5, the big screw. This will push down the battery connector. As you can see, um, the gold things aren't lined up equally, so one is more to the right. So if that's the case, what you can do is loosen these screws. Okay, and then you can kind of pull the board over slightly, 
and then tighten it back down. All right, so that way when you push this, you should see equal amounts of the gold part sticking out on both sides, okay? So it doesn't need to be centered right here. The most important part is when you put this down, this square piece, that you can see gold sticking out on both sides, okay? All right, so let's put this battery screw back in. There we go. All right, make sure that's all tightened down as well. We can put back the little liquid detector sticker since we still have it. Okay. It's going to be tough. I'm going to use a needle to hold it so it's easier. There we go. All right, and you want to be careful because these things are all connected to the battery now, so they are live. Okay, so now we're going to connect this side. Same thing, you can use this little plastic pull tab to guide it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in camera. I'll try and show it, but basically the same thing. Just slide this connector in. It's hard to film this, but I think that's in. Let's see here. So if you pull that tab up, you should see just a little bit of the gold part sticking out, just like that. And then again, with your finger, just swipe over it to push that latch down. All right? then you close that. Put this piece, put this plastic cover back on top. I like to line up the little circle um, adhesive with that, and then I just flip it over down like this. And then I line up the edge of this piece with the edge of the adhesive. And there we go. So now we got everything back together. We're going to put the bottom cover back on. Okay, to put the bottom cover on, there are these little sliding clips. So just do the reverse of what you did to put it, take it out. You hold it up at that angle, slide in the clips. Okay, this, all right, it is a little tricky. Slide in the clips and then go to the other side and do the same. You might sometimes have to pull it back a little bit and then slide it up to get it in the clips all right but there we go then just push the clips down push the center clips down and then put back all the screws usually you'll test it before you put everything back together but i'm fairly confident it's good unless the battery that i received was bad so i'm just going to put back all the screws all right i also like to twist the screw backwards first to make sure they go into the um, screw hole properly all right and then tighten it in place this one, oops, I need to slide it over a little bit more. So this one, I might need to pull it up a tiny bit. So usually you want to check both. I didn't do that. Okay. But uh, after you slide it, you want to slide the other side in more. Okay. Because sometimes it will slide back out. All right. So make sure that's all lined up. Good. There we go. And then tighten the screw in place. All right, so put back all the screws. That's four. I'll probably end up needing the charger, so I might be back. Let me see. All right, so we got that. Now we flip it back over. Open it up, and then usually, oh, it's clicking. So if it clicks, then that means you know that you don't need to plug it back in, and the computer should be starting up soon. Um, and usually after changing out the battery, I like to do a PRAM or SMC reset. So let's see. Oh, oh, the battery is low. So I am going to have to plug it in. But anyways, um, SMC reset usually doesn't work on these models, but usually what you do is control option shift and the power button, and then... Um, it should like power cycle the computer PRAM reset you press the power button while it's starting up you press command option or command option PNR and then you should see the screen flash off and flash back on then you know you did a PRAM reset properly but that's pretty much it so hopefully this video helped you guys if it did please like and subscribe help others find my videos and thank you for watching I'm going to charge up this laptop and I'll see you guys in the next one bye